Okay, we are back. And I just wanted to check out this area because there's a bunch I didn't see. K Rome. We are the artificers, nothing. We can't even prove their sentience. They're a material one by call has every right to exploit. Um, are we the artificer? Ah, crap. They take a sec, huh? The artificers? That's us, right? Lab entry west. Even in its sorry state, paneling and double seal lock suggests a bicall lab. Machines glint against the wall. Sand drifts. Here the wall seems to have breached through the cave system, opened up during the breach. Mineral skeletons, ornate geometric skeletons, like those found in the bloom. Minet called them artificers. What are they doing down here? Would she just tell us that it was us or not? We were using them? Harvesting them? I, I really do wonder if that's us or not. Sphere, fragment. But, oh crap, but can these geodisc spheres really be valuable enough to build a whole arcology around it? Whoopsie! And then bury it? Well, at least you guys saw what it said. Uh, half the lab is drowned in sand, an etcher ripped apart by the collapse. This place is almost totally buried, wiped from existence. It's a good thing I came back. Protect the specimens. These skeletons alone are able to correlate millions of quibits. Uh, they are impeccable. Santiago. We have to power down. If the shielding is breached, it could blow up the whole facility. Start shutdown now. Workstation. Sealed cups still sit on the surface. Stylus buried in layers of silver silt. Hardware corroded into lumen piles. What's that thing? It's an atomic etcher. This was a computing lab with all the machines are for hardware fabrication. Lab locks. Why did these close when the arcology was breached? Why didn't they close? Were they open afterwards? The lockdown overridden somehow? That sounds sketchy. Lab entry. The security locks lie wide open, giving a clear view of the lab equipment beyond. Unlike the lower level, the walks here have restricted the corrosion. Their matte white covering stained with orange, but unbroken. I'm very sure we went up this way, so we'll go back. Uh, in between the sessions, I actually looked up the uh, ecology. I'd never heard of that before. It's uh, apparently like a mix of architecture and ecology. I guess you could have guess that but i thought it was fake <laughs> like completely made up for this game uh but i'm not totally sure but i don't know it'd be cool to live more with nature than against it like we do now a cave entrance a dark and rough silt behind the lab's paneling leads to a bedrock of the panel Fractured cave. Deep cracks lead into a dark and handful of tracks suggest creatures come and go here. Is this the source of the initial breach? We have all of it. This cave system must connect to others under the slopes, allowing creatures to come and go. Broken panels. Oh, this is a sample site. Oops. And... Um, 
I guess we already had that. The rooms here have been buried in rock, leaving only the shattered passage between them and this cave. Um, huge slabs of rock have fallen here, raising the boundary between the lab and the dark cave surrounding it. Uh, this looks like the way back. We'll come back that way in a sec. Mm -mm -mm. Buried lab. The entirety of this room is lost beneath layers of sand. The bars of a metal frame, like a bent and broken rib, spoke at the drift. Getting poetic, I see. Biohazard boxes. This acid yellow container shine brightly in the suit's lamps. Streaks of rust along their side show they have sealed with time. Security iris, sand piles against the barrier. Uh. Let's go. Break down the walls. I'm happy I came back. There's a lot over here and we got the biohazard thing. The ceiling of an entry hall is partially collapsed. It's grid work of grinders bent and rusted. Um, I wonder if there's another way up this way. Uh, it's kind of hard to see how much further it goes. We'll just keep going. Rusted platform, the rusted choke hall stretches out in the dark below. Wrecks and rocks lie in the shadows and silt. Go further down? Oh, well, I didn't see that coming. Um, let's just see what else was over there before we leave this whole area. Uh, collapse quarter. More biohazard boxes. The transporter has split its load of biohazard containers in a faded but yellow neon. What's even happening here? Fused window. Crippled metal shutter has rusted with the hole left by a broken window, the security measure, which in the end meant nothing. a seating area around the atrium some of these ceiling areas remain flooded with sand it's easy to imagine lab techs meeting here on their lunch I'm sure it's just a standard security drill we were able to return to your other shareholders shortly The financial implications are massive. We have never even come close to achieving this level of computation before. Um. Okay, we went this way last time. Now let's go down into the depths. It seems like these people had shorter messages. I don't know if the people downstairs had more time with their, their recordings. Hopefully we don't need a ton of these because I need some oxygen. Hopefully, yeah, we just need the one sample. And down we go. Oh, 
Oh. We're here. I guess I missed this when I walked in. I'll meet you back at the lab. We got our one extra sample. And I'm curious what we are, if they, she wasn't treating us as a person and they're saying that this technology is available. And also, what ecology actually looks like in the real world, if it's not, um, I don't know, whatever we end up calling it, in a sci-fi way. Because you always hear about how we'll, like, imitate nature. Did we do this already? Hello? Today is big on the ketchup game. I uh, don't know why that one's not going, but okay. It's not letting me drag it. See what we have updated. Ooh, we have everything here. Slow Mason. Slow Masons are colorless polyps covered in waving cilia, which etch ap elaborates uh bleh, 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 which etch elaborate spirals into a facility they feed upon. These pale, formless creatures are solitary, but not exclusively so. Some uh, accumulate together in groups, hugging against each other's mass. There appears to be no obvious chemical exchange or communication within these groups, but perhaps the patterns they form as they eat serve some social purpose? Their exteriors show frequent evidence of consumption by other species, with no obvious method of defense. Upon being threatened by pressure, these polyps recoil, but do not appear to possess the ability to flee rapidly nor fight back. Perhaps sampling their secretions might help us to understand the underlying pattern. Ooh. It's a language? I feel like that's kind of like a leap, no? To have that polyps have a language. This is how they digest. The seams and corrosive secretion. I guess when I thought of a polyp, I was thinking like a uh, jellyfish polyp. I don't know if you know this, but jellyfish have their polyp stage and they just go in circles between that and the thing that you think of as a jellyfish. I thought this would look more like that. Oh crap. I didn't mean that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I just wanted to see it because it's easier to imagine them. Slow masons. Analysis of the patterns secreted by slow masons suggests something close to rudimentary communication. There are repeated motifs created by multiple members of the species, unlikely to have emerged simply from their natural movement and feeding patterns. I guess it wasn't me. I don't know. Sure, fine. Communication. Uh, due to their slow pace, it would take an extensive amount of time to determine and prove a correlation between rhythmic alterations in pattern and events faced by the polyps, whether they represent warnings, a form of social engagement, or markers of potential nutrient sources remains unclear. 
But how are these patterns perceived by other masons? Without any obvious eyes, they cannot see them, but perhaps like Braille, these secretions are read by touch alone. That could make more sense. I guess. Uh, uh, I'll let my suspension of disbelief be there, that the patterns are there, and maybe the ocean currents help them, but they could leave like a chemical signal. Analysis of the strange molted skin I found in the Arcology cave shows it is clearly formed from the flesh of slow masons. Within the tissue, the bodies of multiple polyps have knitted together over a span of decades, forming one larger communal layer. It may have provided protection, or perhaps it was a birthing sac for some larger unknown forms. Shed skin can represent evidence of renewal or transformation. Perhaps the polyps are not mature, but are a larval stage of species, with each member untying, uniting to form a larger being. As of yet, I have found no trace of this matured form of mason, but the cave networks of the ocean floor could hide many creatures that could easily evade discovery, especially if they do stretch downwards. Uh, there's a bunch that you can't see. Do we only have this? Maybe we'll get some more on the long crest eventually. I kind of want to stick to it if we have the sketch to read them. But you can pause it if you're more interested. Looks like there's a lot of completionism here um, that could happen. A water bulb. Water bulbs are pale, soft, egg-shaped creatures with transparent secretions in their outer membrane. Water bulbs filter water through their interiors, which allow hollow, which are hollow apart from a single gelatinous sphere which sits at their center. Their anatomy is so unique that it is difficult to understand exactly what these incredible passive creatures are doing. They seem to have small sump-like legs at their base, that's adorable, for stability, but it is unclear if they could use them to move. Water bulbs seem to simply sit and filter water while bathing in the pale light at the edge of the fan oasis. Oasis? Perhaps we could understand more by analyzing the petal pollen. This really does feel like reading a bio textbook for just another world. We have the eyes, layered photoreceptors, thin external membrane, transparent windows. This thing is just living the life with this whole protective bubble around it and it just sits and it's cute nubby little legs. Ah, oh, crap. I keep forgetting that. That is not how that works. Um, where were we? Crap. A water bulb. Behavior. The analysis of petal pollen, which reveals them to be water bulbs with the skin of water matter, fails to add much more to our understanding of the water bulb. It's clear that they gain nutrients and perhaps some of the oxygen housed in their interior from their consumption of pollen, but unlike the growing, glowing fans, they don't seem to be reliant on it. Instead, they display a surprising level of passivity while absorbing and filtering much of their local environment. They seem to be without predators or prey and are ignored by many other life forms. I have noticed that some specimens have buds, small growths, which suggest they are growing clones of themselves to reproduce. Perhaps by carefully sampling one of these buds, we might be able to get a miniature picture of the anatomy. Analyzing a water bulb bud has provided an important insight into their anatomy. The bulbs themselves are mostly hollow with a thin membrane filled with pores separating them and the water around. The interior side of this membrane is iridescent, lined with hexagonal crystals and a, of guanine, producing an effect like the eye shine seen in the terrestrial cats, sharks, and other creatures, but on a much larger scale. These crystals reflect light onto sphere at the center of the bulb. 
which is in fact a huge and impossibly complex compound eye. This eye can see a broad spectrum of light, including UV and IR, with at least 36 different photoreceptor types. What are these water bulbs observing, and why when they are so passive? Just the thought of the local of their total vision makes me nervous in their presence. I've always wondered what it would be like to see other colors, like butterflies. But then again, they might wonder what it means to look at the colors that we can see. I don't know. I'm all for more colors, despite my love of the way this game has like four colors at one time at most. Uh, not the dive map. Not ready there. New log. Uh, oh, she's coming for us. I knew you've been reading these. The access logs show someone has been in the file system of my terminal and well by process of elimination, it has to be you. I don't mind, in fact. I suppose I've been writing these entries for an imagined audience anyway. Heh. <laughs> Confessions or maybe just need to talk? We make a strange trio now. Me, a depressed xenobiologist who can't keep their mouth shut. You, an AI built from the remains of a sentient species, and your sister, Manet, who is now more plant than human, did not realize that it was the love of a sister. I really thought it was more... Does that mean that that's also her mom? Potentially could be her mom that was found in the ship? Uh, I mean, Ellery's mom. Hmm... Maybe, maybe. Uh, but as far as I can tell, we are the only ones on this planet who have any chance of finding what happened here. I think I'm starting to understand why Monet called me here. It was because she trusted me to not give up, not let this go. Let's not disappoint her. We're AI built from the remains of a sentient species. Is it the skull? the skeleton bits mm. sphere fragment I'm just gonna transfer whatever we have multiples of just in case I need oxygen or whatnot We're doing like a lot of ketchup this round. Another Baikal facility sits at the center of the bloom beneath the rocky shelf, the Narcology data labeled Site 2. Oh, there's another one all the way out there. I for some reason thought we would go to this like empty bit of map. Hmm. This goes well. I don't know if we'll be able to catch all four of these, but if we have to go out this way anyway, let's see. I'll see, I'll write them down. Um, so the first thing that we might hit would be the bivalve bloom vein shell. And to the rightish. There's no way I'm gonna remember this once we start getting out there. Uh, bloom froth. Source. I don't know if this matters. I think I picked up some of them in the beginning of the game, like totally by accident. Bloom fan. Stem. I'm hoping these will give us more of the uh, the pictures and stuff because I don't really want to read them as much unless there's a picture. Uh, nesting weavers. Nest. It's all four, and it goes pretty far to the left. Um. We'll try our best. We might not get any. Let's give it a shot. 
I'm glad they're having us go back to this area and we don't have to backtrack just for the samples. Because I don't know if I would be as interested in doing that. Um, so it's nice design. The map is huge. Oh crap. This has the whole like bloom bubble. We'll try our best. Uh, silicate skeletons. Is this what we need to help us survive here? Because that would be excellent. Is that this one? With oxygen bubbles? I think it is. We'll try to go to areas that we haven't been before. The ghost of some equipment lies in the silt. One of many pieces lost in Monet's expedition to the bloom. This is all newish. Toxic water. The rock outcrops of this area are clogged with strings of microbial growth which stands in the current. Rock sheets. This is because we're in this like area that seems so toxic literally toxic waters i like don't want to go too crazy into reading all of it because i'll just talk really slow let's see what we get Bivalve shell. Wow, that's exactly what we were looking for. One down. The next one we might hit would be bloom froth. Melt hole. Layers of rock stick out beneath the silt, eaten away by microbes of the bloom. Holy crap, the air really is like... Toxic. We aren't gonna make it that far. None of these have oxygen. fan dust I don't know if this is what we want or if this will give me what I need no is this the bubble the oxygen bubble this is all the data gathered there Metal traces, toxic water, toxic water. Is this what I was looking for? Fan dust? Bloom froth, not quite. I'll take anything that gives me oxygen. Even if it's not exactly what we're looking for. <sighs> Is it going too far to the right? Am I super off course? sample candidate okay if this isn't it then i'm just gonna go back on course um uh crap there's another one it's just more right Okay, we're gonna go back.
Because we were supposed to go mostly south-ish. Something bright glows ahead. Oh, yes. Bubble's edge. Let's get into that bubble. I thought this is the one that made the air bubble, but maybe not. Mm. Nest workers. Tiny transparent creatures sampled from a woven nest. Nesting weavers. That means I definitely missed the bloom fan and froth somewhere, um, somewhere along the way. Vass Ridge descends to the north where it may be possible to cross. What did it say? Descends to the north where it may be possible to cross. This is further south than I expected to be. Um, I wish I could see the map from here. I'm happy I took note though, because it seems like burned by electrical currents. It seems like I did miss something. Toxic everywhere. It's toxic. I'm sticking on, slipping under. I'm gonna die. Yeah, I'm gonna die. It's toxic. I have no more oxygen. No, not this, not this. Pilot at risk, operator override activated, safe zone located. Ugh, is this because I let it get too low? No. Or is this because I was getting close to a secret? Probably not, I think I was pushing it. Ugh, I knew I was talking too much. I didn't want to get rid of the samples. What happened, are you back online? Whoopsie. I think the suit's preservation protocols kicked in. It brought us back to this way station. It was lucky. Please, I need you to keep an eye out on your oxygen power. Don't do that again. Now, where were we? Ugh. 